Now, Australians in France are saying sacre bleu this morning with the Matildas quest for their first ever Olympic medal off to a rocky start. Yeah, the Tillies had a 3-0 defeat to Germany this morning. It is a big blow to Aussie spirits on the eve of the opening ceremony. Let's go straight to Tom Maddox, who's covering the Olympics for us. Tom, good morning. Jeez, a lot of Aussies got up quite early this morning. They set their alarm. The results, though, weren't exactly what they were hoping for. A 90-minute nightmare, uh, the worst uh, possible start to an Olympic campaign and an Olympic campaign in disarray. It's just some of the headlines making uh, news this morning after this uh, disappointing result out of Marseille. Uh, the result uh, has indeed prompted the Australian coach Tony Gustafsson to tell reporters after the match that uh, he's sorry. He says, I'm sorry to let down the fans back home that set their alarms to 3am to get up and support us. It was, by all accounts, Emma, a classy and convincing win to the Germans, 3-0. They really showed us why they're ranked fourth in the world at the moment. It was a one-sided affair, and it could have been a lot messier um, had it not been for, for some desperate defence from the Matildas. And as you say, Emma, it leaves Aussie supporters in Marseille who went to support there and also here in Paris pretty disappointed. The Germans played really well. I mean, they looked a little bit all over us. We were hoping it was going to be OK after the first half, but no. The defending wasn't amazing, but, like, the spirit, and they just kept going, and I think it was really good. It was a shame that we lost pretty bad. The girls put in a really good effort. Obviously, Germany is a really tough team. It was a tough game, but, yeah, like, we love the Tillies. We're proud of them, and we just keep pushing forward. Emma, next we head to Nice, where we play Zambia in an obviously a must-win game on Monday morning Australian time. Then after that, we're up against the USA. So remembering it's the top two sides of the three groups that progress to the quarterfinals. Um, it's also the best third-placed countries. They'll also advance to the knockout stage. So a tough task for the Matildas ahead, but uh, you certainly can't rule them out from here. No, absolutely not. But, geez, those headlines, ouch. Uh, Tom, in better news, though, the Rugby Sevens men's team, they're getting closer to gold, securing a spot in the semis. They have a great result for the Australian men. A short time ago at the Stade de France, they beat Team USA 18-0. So that means the Australians have advanced to the semi-finals and will play Fiji, the very strong Fijian outfit, on Saturday. Fiji, they came from behind to beat Ireland 19-15 and progress to the semis. And South Africa, they've shocked New Zealand to advance to the semi-finals. They won their quarters 17-14, uh, to 14 rather. So the South Africa They'll play the French in the other semi-final after uh, star Antoine de Pont's uh, side uh, beats, uh, won their game to progress to the semi-final. So a welcome result for the home nation there, Emma. Yeah, Tom, but away from those results, um, a lot of focus on swimming because an Aussie swim coach is facing a lot of heat. What's the latest on that one? The boss of the Australian swim team, Rowan Taylor, Emma, he addressed the media in Paris a short time ago on how he would discipline or otherwise Michael Palfrey, one of the Australian swimming coaches. And as you say earlier, uh, he's decided not to reprimand Palfrey and send him home. He's been cleared to remain here in the Australian camp. The context is that Palfrey told South Korean media that he hopes world champion Kim Woo Min wins gold ahead of Australians. Uh, Sam Short and Elijah Winnington in the 400 metres freestyle, which gets underway in a few days. So he apparently said, go Korea, wearing his Australian colours. That really drew the ire of the Australian swim team. Palfrey uh, said he was sorry today, he said sorry to Rowan Taylor, but uh, not before Taylor told the media earlier today that those comments from Palfrey are un-Australian. So uh, Taylor addressed the, the media again a short time ago, and as I say, he's decided not to send Michael Palfrey home. We just had a team meeting, an online team meeting, where everyone was on there, where Michael apologised profusely for his, uh, his uh, mistake. Um, and again, I don't give him 
you know, I'm, I'm very critical of him. I believe it was a, a, a very bad error a judgment, and the consequences for that will be will be uh, will be coming in the future when we get back home. So, Emma, you'd think that a few days out from your Olympic competition in the pool, it's the worst time to get this sort of distraction. But Channel Nine has spoken to Elijah Winnington, and he's told them he couldn't care less. Uh, well, I reckon a lot of the swimmers will be completely and utterly focused and will be cheering them on from home. Tom Maddox, thank you. Let's go to the US now, where Joe Biden has met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu amid protests against the war in Gaza. Michael is in Washington for us this morning. Michael, great to see you there again. Uh, what do we know about this meeting? Uh, we know it's happened, James. That's one thing. We haven't got a readout of what the two men discussed, but not surprisingly, the war in Gaza would have been very top on the agenda. Differences of opinion between Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, over the conduct of that war. Joe Biden, in his farewell speech to Americans last night, said that ending the war, at least having a sustainable ceasefire, would be one of his main objectives in his final six months of office. But at the same time, we had that very hawkish speech by Benjamin Netanyahu to the US Congress, where it was pretty much full steam ahead as he saw it. Uh, for the war and he believed total victory was in sight for Israel. So finding common ground uh, would have been very challenging for these two leaders. In terms of protests, uh, there was some protest action outside the White House, extra security in place uh, for that, but nowhere near the level of scenes and protest action we saw around the US Capitol yesterday. At the start of those talks in the Oval Office, Benjamin Netanyahu was full of kind words for Joe Biden. Mr. President, we've known each other for uh, 40 years, and you've known every Israeli prime minister for 50 years, from Golda Meir. So from uh, a, a proud Jewish Zionist to a proud Irish-American Zionist, I want to thank you for uh, 50 years of public service and 50 years of support for the state of Israel. And I look forward to uh, discussing with you today and working with you in the months ahead on the great issues before us. Benjamin Netanyahu also meeting at the White House this afternoon with Vice President and presumptive Democratic Party nominee Kamala Harris, who is seen to be more sympathetic to the Palestinians' cause than Joe Biden. And tomorrow, the Israeli leader flies down to Florida to meet with the Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump. Well, Michael, you mentioned the candidates there. This, of course, is set in the backdrop of this election race that, gee, it's getting quite heated. What's the latest from the different camps? Yeah, it's getting quite heated and it's pointing, uh, Emma and James, to what is going to be uh, a particularly uh, grubby, for want of a better word, uh, final three months of this election campaign. Uh, a lot of the inflammatory rhetoric, it has to be said, coming from Donald Trump. Uh, he used a rally appearance yesterday to talk about uh, Kamala Harris and his words being a radical left lunatic. Uh, describing, Kamala Harris, describing Kamala Harris as, in his words, lying Kamala. We've had a few Republican lawmakers on Capitol Hill going as far as saying Kamala Harris was a, quote-unquote, diversity pick. Uh, and that has even been uh, shouted down by the Republican Party leadership. Uh, also today, we had Donald Trump uh, phoning into his favourite Fox News breakfast TV program, and he was asked by the host to respond to what is going to be a very prominent line from Kamala Harris, in that she is quite happy, as she sees it, to compare herself as a former prosecutor in a past life versus convicted criminal Donald Trump. And this is how Mr Trump responded to that. Well, I think it's disgusting, and I get a kick out of one thing. They say, sir, be nice. You just got hit with a bullet. Maybe he's changed. Be nice. And I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage uh, when you hear that. They've weaponized the justice system against me. They've indicted me four times. They've pushed other lawsuits onto me. It's never happened in this country. This is like a third-world country, what they've done, a banana republic. Kamala Harris today addressing a teachers' union rally in Houston, Texas, saying that if Donald Trump was re-elected, he and his allies, extremist allies, her words, would take America back to a very dark past where books are banned and abortion radically restricted. Here is Kamala Harris. In this moment, we are in a fight 
for our most fundamental freedoms. And to this room of leaders, I say, bring it on. And finally, we have uh, yet another Hollywood celebrity uh, traipsing into the presidential election campaign. Who can forget George Clooney a couple of weeks ago, sensationally calling for Joe Biden to step out of the race? Well, today, Jennifer Aniston, a former Friends star, a movie star, came out and was quite critical of the Republicans' vice presidential nominee, J.D. Vance, for something he said on TV a few years ago. And I'm quoting directly that quote from J.D. Vance. He said he believed at the time the country was being led by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable in their own lives and the choices they've made. And he cited Kamala Harris at the time, even though Kamala Harris is the proud mum of two stepchildren. JD, uh, Jennifer Aniston uh, popped up onto Instagram today and she took aim at J.D. Vance saying that I truly can't believe this is coming from a potential vice president of the United States. And the Hollywood star went on to say, all I can say is, Mr Vance, I pray that your daughter is fortunate enough to bear children of her own one day. I hope she will not need to turn to IVF as the second option because you are trying to take that away from her too. 102 days to go before Election Day. Strap yourself in. <laughs> uh, it's going to be particularly <laughs> ugly. Who's counting, Michael? Who's counting? And uh, before we let you go, fantastic work over oh, there. Yeah. You have Amazing. impeccable timing <laughs> for when you turned up, but it's been uh, really great to have uh, you over there. And your analysis uh, for several weeks now. Yeah, Michael, are you coming back? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, but I, where I go, big stories happen, and yeah. on that basis, I hear Italy is very nice. Oh, interesting. Mm. Apparently, there's a bit going on in Paris. You can swing past there, but uh, Michael, thank you. Paris is nice too. I'll go there and create some news. No, no, I'll be back back on air very soon. Great. But, uh, wrapping up here, and uh, uh, can I say, working with a fabulous team here in the uh, Washington uh, Bureau for the ABC. Uh, Michael, thank you, and stay tuned because we are going to look back at Michael's time in packing. Washington. We had nothing Why to do not? with that, though, in case Michael's still listening. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what it's going to turn out like. Hey, let's get some other news now. And uh, because the uh, Philippines Coast Guard is trying to contain what it's called an enormous oil spill after a tanker carrying industrial fuel sank in rough seas. The Philippines Transport Secretary says the ship was carrying almost one and a half million litres of oil and one crew member has died. The Coast Guard says there is a big danger that the spill could reach Manila, polluting beaches, resorts and, of course, damaging fishing grounds. Queensland's Attorney General is expected to announce a four-year strategy this morning to help curb domestic violence. The strategy will aim to improve risk assessments, referral pathways and interventions for offenders. Queensland police data shows domestic violence offences are continuing to grow, making up 57% of total assault offences in the past financial year. The Australian National University has admitted to underpaying employees $2 million as a result of an error in timesheet processing. An investigation found the errors spanned 11 years, affecting more than 2,000 staff. ANU will back pay staff over the next 12 weeks and says it is deeply sorry for the error. Advocates for the safe use of illicit drugs say pill testing plays an important role for people who may be taking drugs for the first time. Queensland's Health Minister has announced a free and confidential pill testing service will be introduced at schoolies this year if the state government is re-elected. The Queensland network of alcohol and other drug agencies says people aged between 18 and 24 are especially vulnerable drug users. The federal court has ruled there is insufficient evidence to prove that the weed killer Roundup causes cancer. A major class action against the weed killer's parent company saw hundreds of Australians claiming exposure to the product's active ingredient glyphosate causes non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And DIY not. Oh, Aussie music, music legends yeah. Peking Duck have confirmed that Bunnings will, will host a warehouse rave. The idea started when music producer Kyla posted a remix of the Bunnings jingle on TikTok before bigger names in the industry jumped on board and the hardware retailer says it is ready to celebrate local Aussie music with locations yet to be picked. Still don't know where, so pick a spot, pick a state, pick a Bunnings. Where do you want to do this party? 
Must have been. I do find Bunnings very relaxing. I'd go to something like that. Well, I don't know if the rave will be relaxing, but oh. sure. You've been to a rave, man? No. no. Do I look like a raver? No, I suburban think... dad. This Bunnings is my I place on a Saturday think... morning. I think we'd think the cops had rocked up if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you arrived at a rave, James. Oh, I love you, Tony. <laughs>